对吧？<笑>老师，老师，你那边的滤镜是变一个小框框了。<笑>我看我能不能改回去了这个，还挺复杂、啊、这个。嗯，老师今天用在不一样的地方开会。这边挺好吗？滤镜啊，挺好的。哇，怎么还有圈圈呢？对啊，它是圈圈，它不。他算他不他们不可搞算法，所以就变成圈圈了。<笑>行了，就不不不圈了。我自己怎么看不见自己呢？怎么这么奇葩呀？嗯、<笑>看不见自己，就能看见你啊！才能看见自己。等一下，等一下，一个屏幕能显示五位嘉宾，所以您从那个右边有一个小的箭头点一下，然后就能看到更多的嘉宾。手机，你用陈香用的手机往右边滑。哦、oh. ，电脑啊，嗯、啊，我用的电脑啊，电脑右上角有个视图。哦，哦，视图选项是吧？对，您选一下，应该是标准或者是画的。没有标准，请求远程控制缩放比例，按窗口大小百分之五十、百分之一百。哎，所以要。所以要提高前屏数字数量与技能，陈晓。<笑>他真的没有啊，这怎么回事？我再看看呢、啊。没事，校长，您就一直保持微笑就可以，这样挺好。<笑>你能看见我吗？我怎么看不见你们呀？<笑>你们说话就能看见，你说话能看不见，<笑>看见你了。您<笑>放心，看得见您。嗯。好了，出来了，终于把自己看见了。真<笑>是要。嗯、呃，各位老师，因为今天有国外专家，所以我们今天呃大部分都是用英文的方式进行。然后呃，我们的第一位专家虽然是来来自南韩，但是呃，达特利呃，他虽但是来自南韩，但是他是香港人。所以我是香港人，是等一下交流的时段我可以用中文。太好了，<笑>谢谢李老师，呃。OK， 那因为今晚我们看那个主会场那边还没上来，我们待会就九点半的时候，真就这次就由你来主持好吗？好的，好的。您反这个都像一张照片啊，感觉。要不动的话就我有在动，有在动，只是一直保持同一个姿势。呃、uh, ，Doctor Ramesh， 呃、uh, ，before we start the presentation， I probably will using the Chinese to quickly introduce what the the day's events， and then I will change to the、uh, English channels， <laughs> then start、okay. with our webinar in English. Hope that worked for you. Sure. Thank you. Hello, Professor Huang.、Uh, How are you? Hello. Yeah, Huang.、Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice to see. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you again. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for supporting again. Yeah. Long time no see. So,、uh, what will be the sequence of、uh, presentations? Uh, you are the、uh, Doctor D will be the first one, and after fifteen minutes, you will be、uh, right after you to、uh, right after his、uh, presentation is yours. So, I hope that will be after two presentations, we will have the kind of twenty to thirty minutes for discussions. Sure. Okay. okay. Good. Um, 
呃，那个君宇，你今天有跟呃一个库隆他们说我们用的会议系统是润吗？有有有讲，对，然后跟那个宇辉那边也通知了，对，嗯，好 ，OK， 好，嗯。DJ 上线，好，嗨 DJ， 哎，晚上好，晚上好，好，呃 ，DJ 你好，那我们就开始了吗？好的，好的，好的，不好意思，迟到了一分钟。嗯、好，没事，好的，呃，这各位呃。各位老师、各位同学，还有呃线上的呃专家，你们好。其实这个是我们，呃呃北师大智慧学习研究的一的一个战略呃教育战略会，但是我们也都会安排一些学术讨论会在这样的一个呃形式上。那今天我们用特别的方式啊、呃、来举办这样的一个学术讨论会，所以呃我们今天会有一个小时的时间，邀请了呃国际有两位专家，来自南韩跟印度的专家来对我们一些对于在呃教育元宇宙的一些分享。下一页，君怡 ，please，OK，、okay, 啊、呃，今天是我们大家出席的人哦，那呃呃比较特别是有两位，呃像我说的两位专家，那呃接下来我会用英文的方式来主持今天的一些会议，那还有一些线上的一些呃同学们也欢迎你们呃随时有问题可以跟教授们讨论 ，OK。Okay, uh, dear professor and colleagues and students, uh, welcome to attend our today's international webinar series on uh, metaverse in education. Uh, first of all, uh, please allow me to introduce today, today's speaker, uh, Dr. Dr. Uh, Li Heng uh, Po Li and uh, Dr. Ramesh Sharma. And uh, Dr. Li is currently an assistant professor with the Korea Advanced Institution of the Science and Technology and also the head of the Ar Argumental Reality and the Media Lab a laboratory. Uh, he has built and designed various uh, human uh, central computing uh, uh, specializing in uh, AI and AR and VR. Uh, today he will talk entitled uh, Metaverse Odyssey. Uh, welcome Dr. Lee. Please say hi to everyone. Thank you. Uh, another professor uh, is from India, Dr. Ramesh Sharma. Uh, he teach instructional in design and uh, uh, also the chairman of the committee to the facility adaptation of MOOCs for uh, Shawai, uh, uh, sorry, I, I pronounce, hope I pronounce correct, at uh, Abedaka University, Delhi. Uh, actually, Shawema uh, is a, a, a programming uh, initially by government of the in India uh, that stands for uh, student works of active learning for younger, uh, for young aspiring minds. So today, uh, Dr. Sharma will be give us a talk more about the uh, uh, building learning power and the bringing uh, bringing uh, equality and equality. And uh, and uh, inclusiveness through the metaverse education. So welcome, Dr. Sharma. Please say hi, everyone. Thank you. Uh, so uh, from hi, our everyone. yeah, thanks. Uh, so from our my let me introduce teams. Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Ding Wenzhang, and uh, I'm the assistant to the team of the Smart Learning Institute in Beijing Normal University. And I also want to introduce our Smart Learning Code. Uh, coding Dr. De Jian Liu and uh, Dr. Rong Huai Huang, and uh, and both of them are leading the smart and institutes for focusing on uh, smart education for futures. Uh, therefore, we're organizing this kind of metaverse uh, in education international webinar series. However, uh, despite the growth of the interesting toward uh, metaverse in education, the literature lacks uh, lacks uh, information on how metaverse and its associated technology can help the education, as well as how uh, new opportunity and challenge that my metaverse create to both teacher and students. Therefore, this series, we hope a uh, metaverse in education webinar and to help the audience better understanding the concept of the uh, metaverse and how to 
be designed to the enhance the education. Today uh, is our kickoff activities, and today is also our uh, regular academic discussion in SLI. So uh, we would like to take the chance to gather in the expert to, and the stakeholder to discuss any uh, emerging and uh, critical topics technology for or in education. And this series of the webinar will be established the international cooperation and also understanding the main hours in education while uh, in the worldwide. So in the next hour, we will we do hope you could uh, enjoy the talk. And uh, please note that due to the limited time, we sincerely hope that also uh, speakers uh, could share your presentation in 15 minutes. And uh, then we will have more time to discuss. So uh, next page, please. So, okay, let's welcome Dr. Lee to give our first talk, uh, Metaverse all the side. And, and, and actually Dr. Lee is a Hong Kongese, not from South, South Korea. Later he will also use the Chinese to share. So Dr. Lee, uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, can you see my screen? Yes. Hello. Yeah, so uh, today I will talk about the Metaverse and more focus on the technology because um, of my background as a computer scientist, but I adjust my slide uh, to our education additions, okay? So uh, thanks for introducing my background. Currently, I'm an assistant professor with KAIS, and also I'm, um, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur uh, designing uh, AR products for uh, the future classroom, and my products has already served uh, more than uh, Hundred school in Hong Kong. So uh, this, uh, like uh, our CE chief executive, uh, Carrie Nam, also uh, try our product, and also we earn like ICT award, uh, Hong Kong awards for industry, etc. Now go back to our main topic. Actually, this talk is based on uh, our recent survey, uh, which is. Uh, released in the mid October two thousand twenty one, and remarkably, every year, uh, sorry, every month, we have more than uh, ten thousand weeks. So, if you want to get the full details, actually, you can scan this QR code uh, for the report. Yeah. So, uh, introduction. What is the metaverse? Actually, the metaverse uh, is origin from the uh, from a concept uh, from the slow crash, and which describe the duality between the real world and the digital world. Uh, what is that? Actually, in the slow crash, it means our world become blended. The virtual and physical environments merge together. And also in the metaverse, you have, um, you have uh, avatars that represent your physical self. The avatars, it means a digital self, but living in the, uh, in the metaverse. So uh, if we want to reach the metaverse, although last year we have a lot of uh, like uh, news uh, saying that like Facebook Horizon, now the name is Meta, uh, Meta Horizon, they claim that they already reached the metaverse. And, but those are the, <clears throat> those are the virtual world. So uh, we actually, from our survey, we foresee that we have three phases to reach the metaverse. First is digital twins on the left-hand side. That means we need to copy everything from a physical world to build up a virtual copy. And digital native, when we have the virtual world, actually we need to build up, um, uh, uh, build up a lot of original contents in this virtual world. We call it digital native. Finally, all these digital contents may go back to our physical world. It makes, the coexistence of physical virtual reality. In these phases, you cannot distinguish what is real, what is digital. Okay, so how to build it? I just uh, present the concept. For example, it is Hong Kong, my home, okay? Yeah, my home city. And first we build up a physical world in like this uh, in our uh, Victoria Harbor. And then based on the information we have, we build up a digital twins. Okay, and then we finally try to have the digital native, eh? uh, have the digital native, build up a lot of content, and eventually we will be, we will have, we, we can see some uh, virtual content appearing in our real world, like the metaverse Hong Kong. Yeah, so how to build it? Uh, here I give a uh, definition. Uh, it is very important to note that uh, the digital prints in the sense of metaverse, under the metaverse definition should be large scale and high fertility. It means that uh, we are, because digital trends in the manufacturing sector, it means uh, we have uh, the, 
the, the digital copy of a components of a single object. Uh, we are not talking about this. We are talking about city scale, like um, uh, a, a big spatial uh, space, okay? So on the other hand, the digital twins reflect the physical counterpart with a lot of property. And all this property actually are data. We call it the data mapping. We rely on the data mapping to connect the physical world and the, world, uh, and the virtual world. For example, in the education, we have a lot of students in the classroom. Perhaps we want to build up a virtual physical classroom. Uh, I mean, virtual physical blended classroom. Uh, so, uh, we capture the student emotion, we capture the student body gesture, we capture uh, maybe, the, uh, maybe the teacher voice, uh, a lot of data. Then we map it into our virtual classroom. And then we need to build up a content creation uh, as the second stage. Uh, in the second stage, we have the digital native. We encourage people to spend a lot of time in the virtual world. And then, uh, but I need to look, I, I need to pinpoint that these digital creations can be distinguishable from the uh, physical counterparts, that means the physical world, even separates from that. Yeah, and also this content creation should be supported by some new economic activities. And finally, we reach the metaverse. Me metaverse should be persistent. Why it should be persistent? For example, in our physical world, uh, we, we don't have a button to switch off the physical world, right? But in the digital worlds, we can, uh, like, like our online game nowadays, like the Counter Strike or uh, Minecraft, you build up a new world and then suddenly you close the server and everything's gone, right? But for the metaverse, because we need to store the things and we need to call the things appearing in the physical world. So that's why we need to make it persistent. There is no uh, switch off button that make, the, this, uh, make all the uh, content creation uh, disappearing. Okay, so that's why we uh, emphasize the word independency of the two worlds, but they are interoperating with each other. And also one very important thing is the metaverse should support a lot of users. And we expect that all people uh, can join the metaverse, like our Facebook, we can see billion users are using the Facebook. So where are we? Um, actually, we are just at the beginning of, the, of, uh, of entering the metaverse. We are almost at the digital trends phases, and now we're trying to build up a digital native. So we are moving from stage one to stage two. But before that, we see uh, uh, we, we have some uh, interesting observations. Before we have the personal computer, uh, we don't have the technology. We rely on the literature like the um, uh, Neuromancer, actually it uh, predicts the VR, and the slow crash predicts the AR and VR or the metaverse. Before we have such a uh, technology like personal computer, we can only rely on the literature. Once the computer appear, we try to uh, develop some test-based games and people play games, but at that time, we don't have the computer graphics. But once we have the computer graphics, we try to build up some uh, 3D digital world. And since the popularization of the internet, we see that these virtual uh, worlds can be connected together like Minecraft, The Second Life. And you can see other technology like the smartphone uh, that can support uh, the mobile games like Pokemon Go um, and also AR, VR supporting like Super Mario and Bitcoins or blockchains that support the uh, uh, NFT games or uh, play to you game. Uh, that means some games when you pay, then uh, you, you earn money. And one of the famous example is Alien World. Uh, not worse, sorry for the typo here. Yeah, so you can see technology is the is the driver to make us reaching to the door of the metaverse. So our visions, how to build up the metaverse, uh, we see several technology and ecosystem here. Uh, we propose in this service, we have uh, eight key technologies. For instance, user interactivity, extended reality. You can regard this uh, user interactivity as the sense uh, to bring 
the physical uh, the, the present of virtual objects to us and also the input channel that convert our intentions to the actions in such a uh, uh, virtual environments or virtual physical blended environments. Extended reality, you can regard this as a display. Mm -hmm. And also very famous technique like computer vision, AI, uh, blockchain, robotics, that can work with uh, all this uh, input-output interface. And, uh, at, and, and behind, we have the edge and cloud computing because all these devices may be relies on some very powerful or computational demands um, demanding uh, algorithms. So you may offload the, um, the, the task to the edge and cloud server through some high-speed network. That is the key concept. We How to use the technology to build up the foundation of the metaverse. And once we have the metaverse, we encourage people to live inside. For instance, you, you work eight hours, uh, but I hope I, I think it may not for the researcher. Uh, we research for 16 hours per day, right? But uh, for the for the like uh, for 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 uh, like normal working person, maybe eight hours for work, eight hour living in the metaverse, eight hour for sleep. So you should have a avatar, and this avatar can represent you like uh, what we have seen in the uh, slow crash. So uh, based on this avatar, you can uh, uh, build up some new contents, and all these contents should have some value and you need to build up a, a sophisticated uh, economic system. Why this is important, for example, uh, we, have a, we, we have a game company in Hong Kong. Uh, people play the game to earn money, but the game, because it, uh, it can earn a lot of money at the be beginning, it attracts 100 times of users. But later on, uh, the market collapsed because suddenly we have uh, too much user and uh, too many users. And, this economic system cannot support large amount of user and all the user uh, later on uh, leave, left, left again, okay. So we, and also we have the social acceptability, uh, privacy, trust and accountability, yeah. And uh, okay, so after we uh, introduce the metaverse, so how the metaverse, uh, can work uh, so we can we can do some reviews in the in our uh, existing products like robot legs, uh, robots, uh, and like uh, Minecraft and Facebook Horizon. We can see that uh, you, you may question: Are they already in the metaverse? I will say that they are in the first stage of the metaverse. They are trying to build up virtual worlds and encourage people to build up their own content. For example, in the Roblox, uh, it is a Quite a uh, quite successful example. Uh, it encouraged people to build up a museum of science, and there exists a lot of subjects uh, like engineering, computer science, biomedicine, and, and Minecraft. Uh, it can train the train up the people to build up uh, like uh, the sense uh, of logic or like creativity, right? Mm -hmm. And also, uh, Minecraft actually in two years ago they tried to build up a real world version, something like the Pokemon Go. You can build a build, build up the Minecraft world in a real world, and we can break the blocks uh, in the Minecraft AR version. But it fell uh, because of a lot of reason, maybe technology reason. Uh, the user didn't accept that at that time. So that's why technology and ecosystem are both important. Um, so you may ask where they are. So uh, I, I try to build. I, I try to say that actually metaverse that do does not limit to the medium, media itself. It can be test, it can be AR, VR, ML, it can be virtual world, it can be the game. Even on the Zoom, we can say that it is a Zoom metaverse. Uh, it may be a little bit abstract. I try to explain uh, from this axis, from the Y axis here. If we go up, then we can see that read and write, actually the content, like we receive a message. Actually, this experience is transient it just go away in like one second. And then uh, the system become uh, smarter. They have the intelligence to know what you like. We go into the personal personalizations. And later on, this platform actually like YouTube or Facebook encourage you to create new contents. And eventually they, uh, they build up a community like the TikTok, Douyin. Uh, so, uh, but they haven't reached the metaverse, even the Pokemon Go, uh, they, if they want to achieve that, actually, if they 
need they, they need to go to the uh, the final stage coexistence or, uh, or between the virtual and physical world and we we have the terms experience uh duality and you can see well, uh, robots they are somewhere in the social community it also support the content creation it also have the personalization maybe some content you like that also that it provides continuous experience even though they are trans transient so metaverse we try to build that uh is it difficult right it is very challenging i can say to because of the limited time i cannot uh, describe all the uh, all the technology i focus on my uh, research areas okay so input is very difficult we have very limited uh, input bandwidth people decide the mobile input tech list because uh, we have the when we have the mobile headset, we do not expect the users to uh, sit down and have a foldable keyboard, have the mouse, because uh, it hurts the mobility. So we will use our body as the input device. For example, we put our put a sensor on our fingertip. We use hand gesture. Here is an example in the classroom setting. Let me show this video. Yeah. Uh, if my time uh, has over, uh, please remind me. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, here you can see uh yeah, this actually, gentleman this finish in, in three minutes things okay okay uh if tr try to drag a, a document from a computer to another yeah so you can see our classroom setting actually the technology is there but how to make it in a, a scalable manner that is also challenging yeah so we, it, with the smart glasses we try to pull a document uh to the to the screen we have like here with the smart glasses, we can pull the things uh, to, the, to the QR code position and then we can show the slide. Yeah, on the other hand, the output is very difficult because, um, because now uh, currently the field of view, we can only see a part of the 3D objects. Although the marketing campaign of the Microsoft yeah, they show that oh you can see the uh, whole object. Actually, it is not the, uh, not the fact, it is just a marketing campaign. And so we can see a more limitation. For example, uh, we have the limitation on the hardware as I, uh, input and also the experience. Also, we, leave, we, we don't have too, uh, sufficient education content. For example, uh, we need some incentive scheme to encourage the people to develop the content in the virtual world. So uh, see, like this is one of the example. Capturing the... Um, the, the, the lower body, the movement is very difficult. That's why most of these are virtual world. They try to build the uh, avatar with only the upper body. Yeah. Well, okay. So um, you, you can see with the HoloLens, you can see, oh, maybe your classmate or your teacher uh, is next to you, but is it sufficient? Actually, we may uh, consider because we only provide a resource, but uh, I, the, uh, we cannot touch it. It seems that th those virtual objects, we cannot do the, have a sufficient interaction channel. So that's why uh, people de uh, decide the device to enrich the uh, haptic feedback or a robotic arm give you a touch, or there is some uh, resistance to uh, push these uh, virtual furnitures. And also the robots can help, even uh, they can emulate a toy or a e-commerce scenario. And also it can make, we can make, uh, multiple robots for a room size uh, scale. For example, we can those uh, movable walls can give a different uh, experience to the user. Like uh, for the in-class activity, maybe we have this setting. For the lecture, we have another setting, etc. So I try to have. Uh, finally, I, I only have two examples left. Yeah, yes, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, don't worry, please. Yes. Yeah. So uh, first one is the uh, metaverse uh, with the musical creation. So uh, it is based on a uh, recent work. Uh, I, I, I have a, uh, this survey uh, after the, the first survey I, I make. So uh, this is the patch X, XR. Actually, it is a VR world. You can put a lot of instruments and then turn the VR world into uh, like, a, like a studio. And you can use a lot of uh, user interaction techniques to do that. And also you, you put some sensors and you put yourself in a, in like a, a performance stage. And then you can uh, show your performance to everyone. And also you can uh, record all this experience in a 360 uh, video. Later on, you can put it on YouTube. Everyone can consume it. 
Yeah. On the other hand, we can foresee that later on, we will we, we not only work with the human, we will work with the robot, right? So um, Metaverse actually is a very uh, good medium to uh, like uh, work with the robot, mm -hmm. allows us to like uh, work with robot to finish some tasks. And uh, I think we can leave it uh, in the discussion session. And uh, that's it for today. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Lee. That's really wonderful and very for for uh presentation for us. I think so maybe we'll leave some time for the discussions. So uh next I will invite our, our next speaker, uh Dr. Ramesh. And uh Dr. Maresh, uh please share you can share your screen. Yes, uh yeah, the time the floor is yours. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. And uh, in fact, uh, I'll thank uh, Dr. Lee because uh, he has set the background and that's why I will skip some of the information, which if it, it may look like uh, it may uh, overlap, but uh, I wanted to show this is the uh, means a book uh, by Neil Stephenson of 1992 in which uh, uh, for the first time he used the word uh, metaverse. And you can see I have taken a screenshot of two pages in which uh, he says that uh, uh, on the back of gibberish explanation, it is the ad address in Metaverse. And here he's explaining in the third paragraph uh, on the right uh, side that uh, how he defines the Metaverse, that what it may look like at that time according to his own perception into it. Now, let's have a quick look. Actually, the uh, gaming has been a very... A deep relationship to the uh, development of metaverse, the blockchain technology and these things uh, they have contributed. And so you see over a period of time, how the things they have changed. If you see that the uh, Doom game in 1993 and in uh, 2020, the interface has completely changed. And similarly, the game Tomb Raider, in which you can see the pixels, uh, they are you know not that of high resolution. But here it looks like completely a human-like form. Uh, the, so the technology has uh, advanced quite a lot. And this has been fueled by the uh, virtual worlds. Dr. Lee showed uh, uh, some uh, examples. Uh, let me just, uh, won't, won't take more time, but a quick view uh, how this, this is Venezuela, which is a free application. There are subscription version also. We can create something into it and uh, you know all kind of activities which are done here the difference is that the human body is the traditional metaverse uh, uh, we see nowadays it's only up to the forex things they are being created this is uh, one example and uh, the another one is this second life in, in fact, Second Life was the first one uh, which was created by Linden Labs in 2009. And here you can perform all various kinds of activities, like you can walk, you can run, you can fly, you can teleport. Actually, that feature is uh, uh, quite interesting of it, that you can teleport to any uh, part of the islands which are there into it, so you can have it. And this ha uh, has very uh, deep relationship on how the virtual worlds they 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 try to uh, you know bring a paradigm change into the education field from there. So the recently means although the technology and the things the concept was there, but it may got more popular since Facebook announced that we are changing our name and shifting to Meta. Uh, in terms of definition, in if we see that uh, uh, what is a metaverse? So Tim Sweeney. Uh, who is the CEO, he defines it as a real time 3D social media platform where people can create and engage in their experiences using their avatars. So that is a more important that it has a social impact on something. Maybe we are doing business, we are interacting, we are teaching, uh, we are carrying out any activity that becomes. And it has a, uh, a you know very interesting relationship with the development of how the World Wide Web uh, it has progressed from Web One 
which was a static web. We could only upload something and people can view it or download something like that. Then web two came, which is more popular as read and write web. Uh, and particularly during this time, the Wikipedia uh, emerged, which became the largest online encyclopedia. Then we had the important catchphrase as the wisdom of masses, means more people, because anybody could read, read, not only read, but write also uh, on the uh, uh, internet, so on, on the web from there. But now the web has become intelligent. It has gone interconnected, blockchain enabled, and decentralized that. And these things, they have powered the, uh, the, the metaverse. No. So the, the shift has been from, say, like storytelling, which was the web two or web or normal wing, to story making. Now, we, we create our own stories, and particularly like the social media, how do you use it? So there, the people here, we are virtual humans. There, it was direct to consumer, but here it is, you know, avatar to avatar. So from person to person, it has gone digital to digital from there. And the experiences, they have gone massive. In fact, there are various platforms which are even blockchain enabled on which uh, uh, I think Zenzar uh, is a platform where the virtual events are being like concerts, you know, the, 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 the music festivals, etc. They are also now being con uh, conducted on, on this. And uh, 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 all those activities, they are being converted. So in what way, what this metaverse brings to us? As uh, 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 Dr. Ili explained, here we have our avatars, we generate, we create it. And the things are going in such a direction that very soon, instead of our username like Ramesh Sharma or Dr. Tingwen as the username, we will be having our avatars as our uh, user ID. And then these will be heavily dependent on our online identities, our interests, our habits, how we carry out the things from there. And this has resulted into a sort of, you know, we go from augmented reality to virtual reality to mixed reality to extended reality. Here, the, it, it, it is a combination of, uh, uh, you know, physical world as well as digital world, the things. And it has a impact on almost all kind of industries, be it defense, be it industry, uh, you know, including education and training. It has a, a great scope for that. There are various drivers for metaverse, like rise of online social platforms and cross platforms, uh, no code platforms, you know, coding nowadays, there are softwares. We call them as no code softwares or the user generated content. And then the, uh, the, the popularity of going cloud-based uh, system. So those things, there, these are various factors which have contributed to the, and particularly the emergence of 5G. Although in some countries, the experiments are also going on. I think in including China, uh, I read it somewhere that work on 6G and 7G uh, is on, 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 uh, on the development. So the, the, the technology is progressing very fast. And since these are heavily dependent on high network bandwidth, uh, uh, th that becomes a very significant driver for that. So how the norms for next generation education, they are being defined. Now the learning design, which is that a great task of the instructional uh, instructors, teachers, as instructional designers, we need to put more focus on user experience and user interface for, because it's, it's the age of mobile. Most of the students, they all, all the time, they access their classes, they access their content on mobile devices. And that's why how the content can represent itself. And then the content, it is powered and it is created using AI technologies or no code tools. And in fact, I remember the, the developments by Google, the, the most advanced uh, uh, conversation agent, Google Lambda, you know, it is very powerful. And uh, uh, you must have heard about GPT-3 and now GPT-4 is there. 
uh, so uh, uh, created by open ai the company owned by uh, mr elon musk like that and it has a vast reach you know all kind of platforms multi sites they are supported by it so the delivery models in education may be like we say uh, saas software as a platform uh, uh, service so here it will be very soon the metaverse as a platform metaverse as a service uh, and those kind of things big and this has made, become possible because of the the increasing power of hardware which can support mixed reality they are cloud native uh, and like that so here what is happening that non game social activities they are on the increase and the very soon the community events like graduation ceremony and in fact during this pandemic we have already seen it because the face to face graduation ceremonies were not possible due to the lockdowns uh, due to in this pandemic so we had virtual uh, graduation ceremonies but still the the technology is advancing into it then it is changing the very basic face of social media ecosystem from its traditional role to a, a, a unique kind of role then the the merging of we call them as digital a, the a combination of physical world as well as digital world and the 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 improvements in augmented reality lenses or glasses and artificial intelligence assisted user generated content these are uh, bringing a lot of change into the educational space so the persistent digital identity simulations dynamic ar avatars and the rapid generation of content uh, which are especially very useful for open world real time creations or simulations or visualizations and hyper realistic digital humans they completely look like us from there so these things they are uh, really you know enhancing the uh, the the equity the access and the way the technology is, is being used so over from my side i yeah. hope i was within the time limit now no it's not you are you are in time so thank you for sharing and uh, from your perspective to to let us know the uh, how you think about the metaverse and uh, and also how do you think of the metaverse in the next generations so uh, i think then we will go uh, to the next uh, next sessions that uh, 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 could you uh, so so uh, so please allow me to ask our Totins DJ uh, and the old Professor Wang, do you want to have any things you want to uh, share or discuss with the both of the uh, speaker? Because today one is from the uh, technology uh, perspective and the other is more about the uh, uh, theoretical, uh, educational theoretical idea to, uh, to talk about the metaverse in education. So uh, DJ, could you? Yeah. Oh, sure. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, thank you for the wonderful uh, speech. And uh, uh, a couple a couple of question I I personally have is the first of all uh, for in terms of education, uh, what do you guys think about the content coming from? Would it be the uh, professionally generate or like maybe even uh, uh, user generate or the student generate? So when it comes to the terms of a metaverse, uh, supposedly everybody is their own boss. They own. They can own things. Then you know mm -hmm. how how do we look at it? You know, it's not like that from the from the from the view of textbook. It always been government issue textbook, oh, and the school pick the textbook and and uh, the student use it. But when when it comes to uh, education in metaverse, uh, what do you guys think about this? Okay, uh, may I ask uh, Dr. Ramesh, could you sh um, share your opinions first? Okay, the, uh, at present, what is happening that uh, uh, if we, uh, since we have shifted from face to face to the online mode, and then there are various uh, kind of modalities uh, uh, in which uh, uh, like uh, we have blended learning, we have hybrid learning, we have flexible, learning and particularly uh, and then there is another flipped learning and mobile learning now in in metaverse when we have our uh, avatars the uh, the 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 uh, a basic difference is that 
you know, and as in education, we say there are three kind of paradigms uh, or dimensions of education. Cognitive, cognitive is related to what we know uh, pertaining to our knowledge. The second is affective domain. Affective domain is related to our attitudes, aptitudes, how do we feel? And the third is psychomotor. Psychomotor means doing something by hand. Like if I can carry out certain experiment, uh, uh, you know, I, if I can measure something that is psychomotor, doing things with our hands. So in, in traditional online education, the second part that is the affective domain, uh, you know, if uh, 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 those things, they are a little bit uh, 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 not easy thing, but in metaverse here, since the, the, the digital avatars, they are much more powerful and they are like a, a, a replication resemblance of human things. So in the classroom, the kind of sentiment analysis and uh, you know, analyzing those, uh, uh, using the, uh, uh, the mood of the students, observing them, interacting them like there, uh, that will be a great benefit. So I believe that the interaction will be much more personal and uh, it will be more a, uh, you know, uh, 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 generating a sort of uh, uh, good interaction among the teacher and the students or between student to student for effective engagement uh, in the educational activities. Okay, thanks, thank you, Dr. Ramesh. Uh, how about you, uh, Dr. D, from your perspective? Yeah, so uh, thanks for the questions. And we, I think that um, we, yeah, in the metaverse, uh, we encourage everyone to be the contributor, right? And uh, in this sense, uh, student, why they cannot be the knowledge contributor, right? Maybe they, they, they can build something. But uh, from the technolo technology perspective, perhaps uh, we need to give some incentive as they become the content creator, right? And uh, they they try to build up uh, some knowledge. Maybe they try something and fail, even though it is a uh, valuable information for the others. Uh, for example, maybe a, a student creates three D objects, and it shares in in this uh, virtual world, and everyone can know it, appreciate it, or um, uh, learn something from it. So uh, these content creators should be rewarded. Uh, by something, so um, I I I I I would propose like um, maybe we can make this as a whole experience and buy it with some like uh, uh, you know nowadays we always have some coins like NFT, um, so uh, maybe the people can uh, get some reward instead of just like a top down approach, uh, teacher deliver the knowledge. Uh, you know, nowadays, like in Kais, uh, we uh, the uh, our president encouraged the let uh, like we uh, I mean the professor to uh, deliver the content uh, and also have the 50, 50 uh, classroom. Uh, we call it education four point zero. We encourage the student to contribute in the class, so we can see in this virtual space maybe the the role of the teacher will change. But uh, how to make uh, this role balance and also make sure the content or the contributor in the classroom uh, be fairly rewarded. Uh, that will be a tricky problem. I don't have answer to be honest. So uh, I think it worth uh, discussion or investigation in the future. Mm. Yes, very good. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I totally agree that, that we should uh, uh, put more attention or put more energy into creating a mechanism that will encourage students or the user to create content to participate. And even, even to a financial mean kind of a value. I mean, that's very important. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, DJ. And thank you both for the professor. And, uh, and any other, Professor Huang, do you have anything you want to share? Yes, I, I, I appreciate uh, very much for the two um, uh, extensive speakers for the presentation and uh, for the landscape and the definition of metaverse. Uh, actually, I have uh, two questions for 
Uh, actually, for for each for each to speak, I have a a, a a question for Dr. Lee. Actually, um, can you show me? Uh, can you tell us uh, what's the relationship between uh, cyberspace and the metaverse? And actually, as you know, in Korea, uh, uh, e textbook is published uh, five years ago, maybe ten years ago. So, can can you? Tell, tell us what what would say the, uh, the current status of the detected book uh, in Korea, and uh, is it possible to involve a uh, detected book in metaverse? That's a question for uh, Dr. Lee. And for Shama, uh, uh, can you uh, tell us um, which kind of uh, a subject, which kind of activity, which kind of students can benefit for the uh, metaverse, uh, the education metaverse? Thank you That's my question. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Lee? Yeah, so your question means uh, how we convert the textbook, right? The, the yeah. tradition, traditional textbook into the metaverse, right? Um, uh, actually, I don't want to answer these questions uh, from the uh, academic perspective. First, you know, I'm also an entrepreneur in, the, in, in, in Hong Kong. We, I, I also, uh, I have been the like, cyber port mentor uh, mm -hmm. could give advice to many, many uh, education at tech startup. Uh, I, I see that they, they have some pain points, like they can they don't have uh, the resources to create contents. Maybe as a startup, they can only create like one subject based on the textbook, right? And mm -hmm. some company try to build a platform, but when they burn all the money, they found that nobody created contents for them because mm -hmm. they don't put, they cannot provide the incentive or justification. It also happened to some very large platform uh, in China. They are only limited to some kind of like a uh, textbook. Mm -hmm. They try to transform it into digital version and make it interactive, having some 3D objects. Actually, it is similar to the things we want to propose in the metaverse, right? Yeah. So the difficulty is how, how to sustain it. We have many, many knowledge and we don't have a converter to make them. So probably I am thinking about, uh, as in my slide, I don't have time to uh, elaborate that. Uh, we may have an AI to convert our things from the physical one or from the textbook, right? Textbook is a physical thing, make it to a digital one and build up the things automatically. Maybe this idea sounds like very crazy, right? But uh, in the recent, um, uh, the, uh, a, 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 sorry, a matter, the Facebook, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, they have a conference about the AI. Mm -hmm. it, they, they try to use GAN, uh, it's a machine learning, right? Uh, to generate the people intention based on their user context. So for the textbook, can it be the user? Dr. Lee? Yeah. Yeah. Are you working in Korea? At yeah, this I'm, moment? Wor I'm working in Korea, yeah. So do you know the project for uh, e-textbook in uh, uh, South Korea? Uh, actually, a national project on, on e-textbook is quite popular and they have some influence to impact to all to other countries, e-textbook uh, e uh, uh, programs, do you know? It's a textbook program, right? E-textbook program, textbook. national program, yeah. Electronic textbook. Oh, electronic textbook. Yes. yes. Uh, I, I haven't uh, heard about that. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I get, I, I think I misunderstood the question. Yeah. No, no problem. Yeah. 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 So another question is, is about the, what's the relationship between cyberspace and the metaverse? Mm. What's, the, what's the difference? What, 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 well, what, what is the, the difference between the current cyberspace and the metaverse? Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I, I try to answer this question. This is more okay. technical mm. one, right? So yep. uh, for the cyberspace, um, we have the internet, right? We okay. experience the, uh, the process. We have web 1.0 and web 2.0, right? And in web yep. 2.0, actually something goes wrong. Uh, all the information, all the data, all the ownerships go to some uh, very large corporate. But in the metaverse, mm -hmm. we propose that uh, all the things should go to a uh, decentralized one. Like uh, yep. the people nowadays claim that it is it should be the web 3.0. When we turn back all the ownership, our content, 
uh, to be honest, like Facebook, actually, you don't own the you you, you don't own the account. It can mm -hmm. the Facebook can stop you at, at any time, right? Uh, mm -hmm. The photo you make, the content you make, can be seized by the I mean, uh, can be can, yeah, can be seized by the uh, by by the Facebook. So we can see that now it's time that uh, in the metaverse we claim back uh, our ownership. This is the first thing. Another thing is in the metaverse we can think that the, cur the current cyberspace is not immersive. And in the uh, metaverse, we think that it should be an immersive internet. We can see that uh, the immersive object will go to uh, go alive in our physical world. So this is the two key uh, distinguishable uh, key features we can see. Mm. Yeah, okay, thank you. Mm. Okay, Okay. for Shama. Thank you, Daddy. Uh, I, uh, yes, I agree with uh, Dr. Lee that the first uh, um, uh, the uh, important thing is the that it is going to take the immersive experience to the next level. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, you never know very soon uh, uh, some uh, business person would be very soon announcing a metaverse university. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the teachers and the students, you know, everybody is meeting into it. And then because we already talking about uh, uh, digital universities or completely, there are fully online universities already uh, around us. We have seen like Phoenix University in USA. They say it is fully online. And uh, similarly, when I was teaching in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur, we have uh, uh, Asia E University which is mm -hmm. uh, e-university, something like that. But the answer to your question is that uh, uh, how it will be bringing. So there, I, I believe that one of the uh, biggest advantage of uh, uh, this technology is to mm -hmm. address the challenges of accessibility. Mm -hmm. The people with certain kind of disabilities or impairments, which can be visual, hearing, or something else, you know, I think uh, metaverse would be able to uh, provide a, uh, a great extent of access to that. Uh, although at present we believe that the cost of the hardware may be an mm. issue, but uh, as soon as uh, the you know uh, because the 5G, 6G, these things are coming, so yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, bandwidth, that is fine. Yeah, and that Actually, my question for you is, uh, uh, in, in your opinion, which kind of subject uh, can benefit for, uh, in, uh, for education in metaverse? I mean, maybe mathematics, uh, English, uh, maybe computer science, which kind of subject maybe can benefit from the meta, uh, metaverse? So another one is which kind of students, for example, undergraduate students, middle school, or primary school, or even, uh, other students, so which kind of uh, students can benefit for, 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 uh, from the metaverse, yeah, uh, at least uh, nowadays? Uh, I think it can be, uh, it will be very useful for various uh, uh, kinds of disciplines. For example, it is very good for communication skills. So, you know, mm -hmm. you, you meet and then you can think that how languages they are expressed. So for humanities or social sciences, and then for scientific also, because you can create those kind of uh, simulations uh, in which either they are expensive or they mm -hmm. are dangerous to the human health. So those kind of uh, things. But I believe, I think it will have good implications for arts, humanities, sciences, or social sciences, depending on uh, I mean, so, uh, uh, how we can visualize the uh, content. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. So, Timon, back okay. to you. Thank you, uh, thank you, Professor Hong. Thank you, both of the experts as answers. And uh, we still have five minutes. I think so. Uh, I want to keep some time to our online uh, audience. Anyone you want to have question, take this chance to ask the questions. Uh, I have a question for Doctor Lee. Okay. Uh, yes. So, Doctor Lee, you are the expert on the interactive interactivities. Right. Can you see any technology breakthrough uh, in the coming future? Mm, any breakthrough, right? <laughs> mm, I, I am not a fortune teller. Yeah, but um, like 
you, I, 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 th I can think about one uh, immediately, okay? Uh, we know uh, one very famous company is the Neuralink, right? In USA, uh, that connect the chip uh, in the in the brain. Maybe those people can use this uh, in the um, in the metaverse for education purpose. And also, if people accept this technology in the in the next decade, and also it can be safe enough for a large scale deployment, we actually can get rid of the limitation in the user interactivities. I show you the interaction can be slow. You need to dress something. And also you have the smart glasses, you do the hand gesture. If you try the HoloLens, if you work with it for more than 30 minutes, you feel that you just, you just like you finish the gym because uh, you do a lot of body gesture, just, just, just like uh, you, you just finish a dance. So with such a device, actually you can give the command, receive information, at least give the commands in a very subtle and fast manner. So that is what uh, we can see uh, as an important uh, breakthrough in the area. I think if I can add something to this, according to me, the uh, a bigger focus is being paid to the, uh, the language translation applications. You know, yeah. because we speak so many different languages and due to globalization, due to our job, we need to move, we need we travel, we go places, we go countries, and we cannot learn all the languages. So perhaps according to me, the next big thing is coming up and that those applications, although there are certain softwares which are, you know, which are already there, which translate, including Google Translator, but still, uh, uh, to imitate it uh, uh, like we naturally speaking something. So I think that will be a very great uh, uh, you know, thing uh, which may come up very soon that uh, I just speak and something you have, it translates to your language. When you speak, I get it to in my uh, own language. And per perhaps these kind of mediums, they can become a good platform for that. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, so uh, actually this concept is uh, like uh, nowadays we try to offload ma many, many uh, mental tasks to our computer, mm -hmm. right? And like yeah. we don't remember the phone number, we just rely on the <laughs> phone. And we try to Google something for knowledge, even maybe a very basic uh, basic ideas of uh, something like, uh, like, like an equation, we won't remember it, right? So we try to uh, offload all the things to the computer. And actually this concept is similar to something like uh, the external memory. Maybe I think after the book, uh, the slow crash, we mentioned that related to the metaverse. The next stage we will, we have something like external memory in the metaverse. And if we are interested in this- uh, Memory think, uh, of the sourcing. Memory of the sourcing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, a book uh, actually is a uh, quantum fifth. Describe yeah. this concept. So I think we, yeah. we, 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 if you are interested, you can, you may look at uh, uh, read this book. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you all of the uh, participants to join our discussion. It's very interesting and very uh, fruitful and meaningful for everyone. Hopefully, you guys enjoy today's webinar. So, uh, I, I, sorry about the, uh, the webinar running off the time. And uh, before we I end our, uh, the, this webinar, I would, I would thank you again. Uh, both our speakers have very uh, interesting and very uh, good, uh, wonderful presentation to us. And uh, uh, and uh, we also uh, we also want to announce that uh, the small plans for our uh, this in international webinar series. Uh, we will we will do that in maybe in the next uh, every two weeks at uh, times, and uh, then we will invite all from the world uh, experts to share their experience, their insight regarding the Vietnam Vietnamese education. And uh, we also in the final we will uh, uh, conduct with uh, we will conduct with uh, one. Uh, one, one of the book regarding the how metaverse uh, and education's uh, effect in the world. So that will be, we will call for chapter and we hope that you can contribute your uh, research to us. Thank you again and uh, hope you guys enjoy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'll say one DJ. DJ. 
就是那个第一个报告的后面那个案例啊，在那个上海那个里头可能是一个启示，那两个我觉得还蛮有意思的，值得关注。嗯，现在没有了。嗯嗯嗯嗯，好，谢谢啊，谢谢各位啊、uh, ，Thank you and Dr. Lee and Dr. Ronch, we keep in touch and we will meet you at S for T again. Thank you. Certainly, certainly. Yeah. Bye bye. 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 Bye bye.